get ready to live in the United Republic of the World Health Organization because the country you think you live in will no longer have powers to govern if your country signs the World Health Organization Pandemic Preparedness Treaty. This is the document we've been discussing at length. What it does is allow the World Health Organization to have all of the power to decide when you're in a pandemic, when you are in danger of a pandemic, and how you must behave your behaviors socially, emotionally, online, your speech. Uh, this is what they're trying to do. This was originally endorsed by Boris Johnson and President Joe Biden in 2021. And now here we are in 2023. And the WHO doesn't have a very good, in my opinion, COVID report card. Uh, but we still want to hand them global powers over nation states anyway. Now, what the update is, because we've been updating you every time they released a draft of this document. And this, as it stands, that document will be re revised and gone over again in July. Um, and then voting will start to take place in 2024 for nations that adopt a full version. So we have some time. I'm very anxious to see that final draft that comes out in July. What we have now is edits to the World Health Organization's articles of uh, international health regulations. And the reason that they're doing this is they have to sort of, it's almost like they have to amend their underlying powers in order to give themselves more powers. So they revise this document and it's worth taking a look at because you can already see how this is going to go based on these edits in the first few pages. Take a look. Uh, they're saying, you know, that how we're defining what we're doing here they just strike the words non-binding, meaning like we're going to give these recommendations, either standing or tech, tech, uh, temporary. But before we used to say that adherence to them, you know, by nation states was non-binding. Now we're like, not interested in that. Whenever, if you're in the WHO, it's binding. So let's, let's just get that out of here. So any flimsy language about this not being the law of the land has been removed. It's like now we're getting the full stamp. Yes. It's well, binding. It's the, the WHO, again, remember, this is not the pandemic preparedness document. This is the World Health Organization, sort of their underlying powers now based on the extra pandemic powers. So they're already saying like, they're basically drunk on their own power. Like I have the... I am... What is it? He-Man. Uh, no, I no. have the power. I am inevitable oh right yeah, yeah. like we, they have the Thanos. they have the gauntlet they have the snap of the yeah Thanos. they right. have all they have collected all five stones infinity stones um and they now have all uh all power so so they are omnipotent sure omnipotent that's one of my favorite words so all powerful all powerful that's, um that's what the world yeah, okay so. yeah that yeah. um and so why and then does this power only kick in when we're in a pandemic? Oh, no, it does not. According to edits to this document, it kicks in whenever they feel like we should be preparing for a doc, uh, pandemic. Um, you see the word prepare there. Like we're, if we think that there are in, they d cross out here, public health risks, they're saying all risks with a potential to impact public health. Now, I think why we need to notice this is because you see the language ratcheting up, telling us as a society, you have mental health issues. You are very anxietized. People hurt your feelings all the time. Mental health and words are hurting you and have the potential to hurt you. So we can say now, not only do we have to have some endemic disease, but we can also say that there is a potential for a public health risk. And so that gives us the power to say that there may be something at risking the potential to negatively affect public health, right? Um, and will they respect our freedoms, right? No, they just cross that one out here in Article 3. Uh, normally, implementation of regulations would have full respect for the dignity, human rights, and fundamental freedoms of persons. No, 
not interested in that. Just cross that right out. But we will say based on equity Who's the and person? inclusivity and coherence. To, like, yes, the, please laugh at this. Thank you for laughing at who, that. Bill. Who is the person that's like, <laughs> eh, let, me, let me get out my, my pen here, my strike through pen. This is my special strike through pen. Um, all right. Human rights. Um, yeah. Let me scratch that out. Human rights. Uh, dignity. I mean, yes, let's scratch that out as well. Well, Who's fundamental the, freedoms is the thing that bothers me the most. Uh, Philip, what are you giggling about? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fun, it's just like the fact that they crossed off, like, like what kind of just like hard ass bastard do you have to be to scratch out the words, like full respect for the dignity, human rights and fundamental <laughs> freedoms of persons be like that. This will not stand. Like they like that's where they're planting their flag. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, really? it's like Thomas Jefferson must be rolling over in his grave. He's like, that's the kind of stuff that I wrote in to the Declaration of Independence, right. right? Don't worry, though, because they say that they will make regulations based on their principles of equity and inclusivity and coherence. So, like, maybe we'll have some gender ideology and some, you know, toged people of different colors and stuff like that, like, in our board members. So, you know, we're being inclusive, but, like, your fundamental freedoms, we're not that interested in that. Well, yeah, they, they took... They took something that's concrete that, that like you can't argue with and they made it squishy so that they can argue with it. And that's what yeah. they've done. They're like, no, this is. And so it's like they're get, they're building in wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Clayton and I were listening to um, a podcast the other day. I, I can't remember the name of this guy. Um, and he was talking about how these like ideological Trojan horses come in uh, with the terms like inclusivity and equity and. I don't know, diversity and ESG, usually like ESG. what they mean when that happens is like, we're going to give ourselves more power. Like this for sure feels like a, a woke Trojan horse. Um, so, okay. Uh, will they maintain the power of surveillance if a small country doesn't know what to do? Yes, they will. Here's article five saying that, uh, look, we're going to tell you, you need to have the power to survey your population. If you can't do that, develop state parties and the WHO will assist you. So like, okay, you're too small of a country, Cape Verde or whatever. Uh, don't worry because we're going to have this on lock, this surveillance thing. And what if officials in your government don't agree that there is a health emergency? They don't matter. Here is how that previously was written. Uh, can we go to the next one? That says number three, it says before the WHO would have to consult with the state party in whose territory the event is occurring. They don't have to consult anymore. They can come into your country and say, you have a pandemic. And if you don't like that and your health officials are like, no, this is not a pandemic. We just we all have colds or whatever. We're not going to give you the no. They decide when you have a pandemic. Pandemic. In fact, it removes altogether the idea that any given state could push back on whether or not there is a public health emergency. See this edit number three, totally crossed out saying if, you know, the director general and the state party, they don't agree on a consensus on whether there's a pandemic or a public health threat, then this is how you mitigate that. Gone. No mitigation. The WHO is just going to tell you like there's no sorry. Um, and what about a pandemic? You know, what do we do then? Do we agree on therapeutics, interventions, masking, vaccines? You know these things. Well, no, the WHO will do that full stop. Um, it says the WHO will carry out an assessment of all of these things. So, you know, any scientific counterpoint should be basically bound and gagged because the WHO is going to be doing all the science, all of the assessments shall run through them. Oh, good, because as you know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation represents alone is responsible for 88% of the total amount donated from all philanthropic foundations, the, the WHO, 88% comes from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So now they all therapeutics, any sort of uh, pharmacological remedies will just will run through the WHO. Yes. Good. Um, See how this works? They also want uh, just a few other things that I'm not going to show you screenshots because I know that doesn't make for riveting TV, but I want us all to just be aware of it. Um, they want open sourced ingredient list of all vaccines. They want to be able to uh, um, oppose 
and implement any travel bans. Uh, but there is a provision that would exempt health officials from travel bans. So we've talked about before how World Health Organization uh, employees and board members and what have you, power holders, uh, they don't pay taxes in the states. They have sort of um, superpowers for as diplomats. They don't um, they get special treatment in whatever state they live in. Um, they also would be exempted from public health travel bans, public travel bans. Um, they want full vaccine and full health passports for travels for travel. This is called the PLF, the passenger locator form. And they want this to be recognized by every state that's a member of the WHO. And they'll have one central website and a QR code to read and authenticate that data. And will they save your personal data? Yes, they will. Uh, this draft says that states' parties may disclose personal data where essential for the purposes of assessing and managing a public health risk. So, yes, they, they, it's there's not one of those, like, let's pay lip service to we'll be careful with your data. It's like, no, you'll give it to us because we'll decide that that's a health risk and we need it. And well, I, I just want to I'm curious, like, what sort of military force? I mean, I'm sure the, the World Health Organization will need its own military now. Like if they're going to go in to try to take, you know, information from people's computers, they're going to try to yeah. barge down doors. Who they, are they just going to use? The, are they just going to use NATO to do it? Who, who are they going to use? They're going to have to have some sort of a, a law enforcement agency. I suppose they will. Um, that's a good question. And I'll have to look at the pandemic treaty because there must be some kind of enforcement. Like, let's say you're the UK and they say we want to take cell phone location data from each person to make sure that they stay in their house during lockdowns. And if they don't, then X will happen. The British military will serve as an enforcement arm of the World Health Organization or right. uh, municipal police. I I'm not sure. Um, and I I've never seen that written out. And I've gone through this document several times. They, they should well, probably any, just any state that. Yes, yeah, so they should probably just start right. their own military from the ground up. Let's build a massive new World Health Organization military. That's probably what they need to do. Go, okay. go ahead, Philip. Yeah, I was just gonna say any any state that signs this is is out of their freaking mind, because why would any state turn over power to somebody that's not regulated by any state? You know yeah. what I mean? Like any government that like they're, they're basically saying in this, we can overrule all the governments on the planet. Like if, if you're. If, you, if like the idea of a new world order frightens you, this is it in writing yes. that they're trying to do. But yeah. this, what I'm showing you tonight, is not something they are taking signatures on. This is the underlying power that they are giving themselves. And then the next part is opt-in. So the pandemic treaty is opt-in. This is not really. The, the World Health Organization is basically changing their articles of operation based on doing that next. So I don't know exactly what any member state of the WHO can do because they're changing their operating agreements and you're already in. You know what I mean? Right, I'm right, not right. clear on that. And I would like a legal expert to make that. Um, it's like being you're, you're an employee of a company and the company decides to change its employee handbook on you. Yes, that's that's exactly what this is. They're basically changing their um handbook and now who pays for all of this well the who will decide based on your country's gdp who can afford what and they will have audits so look at number four that they've added um who shall develop an evaluation matrix for assessing the contributions of state parties to the international coordination of public health uh so they will go in and audit your books basically of your own country and say you can afford this. You can afford that. You can afford this, uh, which means, you know, they they will have to have a, I don't know, some kind of in on public finance, on the Treasury, on taxes. Right. There's some questions. Um, and of course, they, they throw misinformation bit in there, too. Here's their sort of summary of all the things they want to do. Look at E. They want to counter misinformation and disinformation. Uh, that information bit is important because the pandemic powers, the document that we can opt into that we've been talking about, um, they've defined a risk now, a new risk. We talked about this before in the draft that we talked about in February. It said infodemic defined as dot, dot, dot. So we never knew exactly how they were going to define infodemic. We just knew that they wanted to. Um, now they have. Take a look. I just highlighted it um, as how they're 
defining an infodemic. They're saying it's a new health threat with this new information ecosystem has generated a new health threat called an infodemic it is the overabundance of information accurate or not. Let's all digest that for a second, because you can have an overabundance of truth, you guys, and that's bad for you. We according to them we don't want too much truth uh makes it difficult for individuals to adopt behaviors that will protect their health and the health of their families and communities so what they're saying is you could get too much truth which would make you not take this medicine that we are profiting off of and we can't have that uh the infodemic can directly impact health hamper the implementation of public health measures and undermine trust and social cohesiveness uh, the infodemic cannot be eliminated. It can only be managed, which makes it a perpetual beast that you cannot kill. And that's why the WHO has to have these powers to be constantly at battle with the many headed monster of an info infodemic. Right. Um, I am absolutely troubled by the idea that accurate information can be a public health concern. Are you your concern? Well, oh, yeah, I mean, if it goes if it goes against the, you know, their narrative, right, just like the covid lockdowns and and vaccine rollout and they wouldn't let you know about alternative therapeutics, which have 30 years track record in history and won the Nobel Prize for medicine. We, we're not allowed to tell you about those things which are readily available because then someone won't make money. If it goes against the narrative, they can't tell you this. Yeah. Even if it's truthful. You can have too much truthful information and make decisions about yeah. your body and your health and your family and your money and your life right. that they don't like. And that is a public health concern, according to this document. Yeah, to me, to me, the, the, uh, the inclusion of the accurate or not is very much saying that they want to override any scientific data that is that is uh, that they don't like. That they yeah. don't like the look of doesn't matter if it was actually if it actually proves or, or demonstrates something to be true. They're like, we don't like it. We don't want it. And that's, I mean, how else could you interpret that? I, I don't know. And we should point out, I say this all the time on the show, and I'll say it again right now. You know, the cons we talk about like maybe conspiracy theories sometimes. People say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. The stories we end up covering here in the show literally come right from their own documents. Like this is not some guy yelling crazy stuff on the side of the street you know, hitting a tin can or no, something. No, obviously not, because I present this information to you in a boring way by showing you screenshots of documents. So you know I'm not, like, trying to drum up something, right? This is the document that we all need to read, and there are some very concerning points, and I didn't make it up, and I've given you the opportunity to read it for yourself. So right. how could you say, like... Wow, this boring chick with the screenshots of PDFs is really a conspiracy well, theorist. Well, to be fair, I haven't seen That's anyone say that. How... I haven't seen anyone say that. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, you know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. Like, people are like, well, that must be the tinfoil hat show. No, no, no. Th these are literally from the World Health Organization. These are their own documents that yeah. you're going through. It's the craziest stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did uh, write this next slide. This is my summary of all of the CA+, plus, the pandemic uh, preparedness um, document that we will have the opportunity to opt in. Again, remember, th these are the things that they want to then give themselves extra powers for, which we've gone over, define the next pandemic, determine lockdowns, give themselves surveillance, determine treatments, vaccine mandates, vaccine distributions, vaccine intellectual property, and redistribution of basically everything. Because if everything has the potential to be a pandemic, then the information we speak about uh, the way it hurts your feelings, your mental health, right? Everything that could be upsetting to you is something they need to manage. A as well as, you know, they are going to talk about distribution, redistribution of resources. Um, we've talked about how they've given themselves the power to say, oh, because those farmers are next to that stream, that's not good. So we're going to, you know, not allow these, we're going to make the governments close down these farms or these factories or what have you. Um, that is written into that document. So, um, you know, that will be on top of the new articles of organization that now has been put forward. So they're going to take this power, whether we allow them or not. The pandemic preparedness document is one thing that we can say no to. Maybe. Um, politicians in the UK have said, they are supportive of this treaty, but, you know, obviously we're not going to give away our own power. That's what they're saying, um, because there was a letter in the UK of, I believe, 30 
uh, foreign min or ministers who had expressed concerns about this. In the U.S. just today, uh, we haven't seen it yet because we're doing this. Uh, New Jersey Representative Chris Smith is holding a hearing about this treaty today, and we're not exactly sure who will participate yet, and hopefully we can bring that to you tomorrow. Um, but again, the World Health Organization has this treaty, has had it in the works for over a year. The final amendments to the treaty will be in July, we believe, and voting the next year. So let us know what you think of it. And, and it's very odd that this World Health Organization document is 666 pages long. Is it? Wait, what? I'm just saying. Uh, no, oh. I'm, I'm joking. Oh. That yeah. part I made up. Well, 666. My, I was like, I didn't read 600 my, pages. 666. Yeah, go ahead. My, my question is, though, like with, with all of the powers that they're giving themselves in this document, are they giving themselves any checks and balances to like corruption or any abuses of the power? Or is it just are they just listing powers that they have and they're not they're not putting any sort of like balancing in there? Any anybody they to do. oversee what they're doing? I mean, Do they? I don't know how binding that would be because it's like this person is the um, what is Dr. Tedros the uh, what's his title? The, uh, the head. The the, head like the, this person's the, the chair, yeah. and this person is the grand poopa, and this person is below the grand poopa, and they will have meetings to see how they're doing, and they will police each other thus. Um, but it's not for us to ring in on there's no public facing accountability um i don't think that even gives uh member states the ability to ring in i mean they're they say they have a diverse board so they will have people from all over the world ringing in but it's very internal and i think it, it we can see how they have been working especially during the pandemic they didn't have checks on their power um they didn't have any you know we weren't given any opportunity to give feedback we weren't given any opportunity to vote. They approve who they want. In fact, they promote people who have been good soldiers of COVIDism. Uh, we spoke about the the guy who was able to provide edits to the Nature Journal that disproved the COVID lab leak. He was promoted inside the World Health Organization, and he worked with Dr. Fauci, and he basically wrote in foregone conclusions to a scientific paper about how COVID did not come from a lab, which was uh, later refuted by military doctors. So we see this behavior. Um, I don't think we're going to see like real democracy functioning inside of this. It's not, it's not possible. that way. It's not possible. When they're un As Philip pointed out earlier, when they're unaccountable, it's not possible. Um, and so that's why you write a constitution. So you have checks and balances, you have a Supreme court, you have, you have a bicameral yeah. government that keeps each other in check. And this um, is how you blow up a constitution yeah, is you just take it and you serve it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who needs a, who needs a, a federal constitution when you've got this, when you've got the world health organization. Well, let us know, uh, you know, again, we always link you to the original document that was in the newsletter today. If you think that we've missed something or misinterpreted, I am open to your opinions. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.